Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over some S17 Plus, S19 Pros, uh, how the miner works itself, what we check for when we go through the miners, make sure that there's no debris stuck in it, make sure the fans are good. I'll show you some of the hash ports for the S17 Plus, go over some of the airflow um, with the hash ports, all that stuff. So if you think that's interesting, hit like, subscribe with the bell. And if you're looking for someone to manage an ASIC, mining farm for you such as this one right here we have s17 plus s19 pros 554 miners here 1.75 megawatts you're looking for someone to manage and set up not just manage but set it up for you go to crypto llc.org send us an email or if you're looking for gpu mining same thing go to crypto llc.org we have different packages um, different uh, options for anyone that's thinking of building out a farm or just thinking about uh, having us just manage a GPU rig for you. Go to CryptoLLC.org. All right, so I'm gonna go in there. It's pretty loud. I'll try to talk loud for you guys to keep, so you can hear me. But I'm gonna be showing you what we check for on every single miner, all right? From humidity to the temperatures, to the fans, to the internals, all that stuff. Make sure that the, fan, that the miner is working in perfect um, condition and there's nothing wrong with it. Then we move on to the next miner. All right, let's do this. All right, so we got us some S19 Pros here. These are the S19 Pros. And so what we check for is we check that the S19 Pro doesn't have anything stuck inside of it. So we obviously check the outside of the of the uh, fan, make sure there's nothing stuck to it. Garbage, garbage uh, sometimes flies through the filter, you know, gets in somehow through like a crack somewhere. That's very rarely, but sometimes it does, and it just gets stuck right on the uh, intake. You gotta make sure it's clean. Then we also check inside the miner because sometimes pieces of garbage go through it and get stuck on that second layer. You can see that. Maybe you can see it for camera. That second layer right there, it's got like a little mesh. And they get stuck on that mesh. So we gotta make sure there's nothing stuck on it. Gotta prevent airflow. So this one looks good. Then we gotta make sure that the power supply fans are running. See, the SIT Pros, they don't really have an issue with power supply fans. But we still check them, make sure that they're running. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're cooling off the power supply. Then we also check, a uh, quick check with the uh, blinking light here at the top. Make sure that it's normal. There's nothing blinking here. Blinking red or just off or whatever it is. So we gotta make sure that's good too. Then we, we uh, check the cord. The cords sometimes start on, you know, unplugging themselves basically. Start sliding out, so we gotta slide them back in. Things like that. Then we check the distance between the miter here. And the reason why we check that is because we want that hot air to come around the side and get sucked into the fan. That's for high humidity situations such as right now. It's winter time. So it's high humidity. So we gotta make sure it comes around the corner and gets sucked in. Then we have humidity sensors here. Like this one right here. What we do is we put them like this, we reset them, which is basically, you don't need to reset it right now, I'll reset it anyway. We put them like this, and we want to know what the hot, what the air is when it's coming out the side and getting stuck into this corner right here. Because that hot air is all the way to the top here, and it's coming around and getting stuck into this corner, getting mixed in. That hot, that cold air coming in from the intake over here, is getting sucked in as well. So it's mixing with the hot air, with the cold air, and getting sucked in there. So that's how we reduce the humidity. And the humidity can be somewhere around these numbers, which is really good. We also put one of these guys on this side here to make sure that this side is also doing the same thing and getting sucked in on this corner, <laughs> and getting sucked in on this corner, and into the power supply. Because we don't want the power supply to absorb 99% humidity is, we don't want that to happen. So we gotta make sure it does that as well from that side. So we put two of these guys, one here and one here. 
make sure that everything is running great. <laughs> all right, that's all we do. Now, for the F-17 Plus, the F-17 Plus, most of the miters are placed like this. There is a hole at the bottom here, so that provides a lot of hot air coming, in, coming out the bottom here. And get it stuck into the fan. Also, there is a crack right here. It's already, it's part of the miter. It's a pretty big crack. And that crack also has some warm air coming out. And then another crack here, more, more warm air coming out. So there's a lot of cracks on the S17 Plus. You can see how flat the S19 is. It's flat here and flat here. So if you put them together, there is no, there is no a crevice, right? There is nothing where the hot air can come through the quarters. It's really flat. But that with the S17. You got this line right here, this edge. You also have that same edge here. Well, it's basically on every miter. So when you put them together, you have a crack. So you don't need to do that. That's good. We just line them up like this and we're fine. We already did all the tests and the humidity is fine and the temperatures are fine. One of this, 17 plus that we check for is again, same thing, we check to make sure there's nothing stuck to the top of the intake. There's nothing stuck to the bar, back of the mesh. Then we make sure that these are not unplugging themselves. And this power supply. The power supply dies. The S17 Plus, they do not have a high quality power supply. These fans just start dying after a while. I'll show you somewhere over here where we have a bunch of them that are running with a with a dead fan. You see right here? This fan is dead. And then this fan is dead. They're both dead. Still running though, but I have to keep in mind that at any time, R410, the power supply will die forever, right? So I have to make sure that I keep that in mind at any time, it will, it will just go out. So we still run it because it can run for a couple more months like this, maybe a month or something like that, but eventually it will die. So we got it, we got that guy uh, kind of put on our little checklist that we're gonna replace him soon. Now if you keep looking, you'll see more. Over here, same thing. Dead, dead, two of them right there. Over here, he's just got one, one that's dead. This guy, this one's dead over here. And so on. Now, the, the fan is not actually dead because I took apart these power supplies. The fan is not actually dead. What happens is there's some kind of electronic component that manages the fan speed. That component dies, and then the fan doesn't have power. But the fan actually works. If I swap out these two fans, then this one will keep continue to work. So I put this fan over here, then it'll start working. I put this fan over here, it will stop working. So it's not the fan that's dying. It's just the power supply is not giving power to the fan. So it's an internal power issue. Now, let's talk about some F-17 Plus passports. All right, so let's talk about some S-17 Plus hash boards now that I'm out of there. So this hash board is a 40 volt hash board for the S-17 Plus, which means it's running at 1940 volts. Uh, the S-17 Plus have a, um, I guess they, they manufacture them in such a way where it auto-regulates the voltages and then it presets what it wants to run at. And uh, each miner has a preset voltage, I guess it's after manufacturing or whatever, they kind of like preset it and give it an EEPROM file that loads onto it. So this one was uh, loaded with 1940. So I put a 40 here. Um, that's just so I know it's 1940. So if any of my other 1940 volts uh, hash boards have a problem, I know I have a spare right here that I can just swap out and take that guy uh, back and, and try to repair him. But this one is running at 1940. Now, this miter is standing like this. You can imagine the intake you know, fans are, you know, about like right, right, right here. They're spinning that way. So that means this is getting direct hit from the intake fans. You can see how it's got a little bit, you know, a little dust or whatever on it, but basically it's a, it's a very clean. I did not clean this hash board. This hash board uh, just came out a couple of minutes ago before I started the video of recording. It came out because uh, I got a, another spare from Bitmain, not a spare, but a repaired hash board from Bitmain that I need to test to make sure that it works. So I unplugged a good 1940 and plugged in Bitmain's 1940. And uh, so this one just came out. So this guy's been running for like 
probably, uh, you know, at least six months without any problems. Uh, has never been repaired before. And you can see how clean it is, right? It's just got a little bit of garbage right here, that's it. So that's how clean we hold all of our electronics, all of our hash ports, our GPUs. We have that nice filter installed, the polyester, uh, blue uh, half inch filter there. So that blocks out dust, uh, garbage. So it's not just like a garbage filter or a bug filter. It's actually a dust filter as well. So it's blocking out all the dust. But you can see after running for months and months and months and months, things still get through, but it's very, very little. So that's how clean we hold it. You can see the back here as well. You can see there's no humidity damage. Um, you would see like corrosion or rust. There's none of that here. Um, the reason is because again, we hold all our hash boards and all our miners, everything in perfect uh, condition. So it doesn't overheat and there is no humidity damage or rust, anything like that. Uh, I can't see what you guys are seeing. So I'm just trying to give you guys some good shots. Maybe you can pause the video and take a look at the condition of the hash board. But you can see there is basically no problems at all, like zero. This hash board, if I just take uh, you know, an air blower and just blow it off, it'll look like it's brand new. There's basically zero problems. And again, this was just came off uh, our miner about like 20 minutes ago before I started recording. So that's, uh, that's a S17 Plus hash board, blows this way. Um, <clears throat> then it, it's running on voltages here, 21 volts. So it's negative, uh, positive, and here's a control coming in from the control board, the plug for it. So that just manages it and tells it what to do and all that stuff. But you got negative, a positive, and running at 21 volts. Uh, you got 65 ASIC chips here. Uh, these are the, I think they're seven nanometers, or seven or eight nanometer ASIC chips here um, from TSMC. So you got 65 of them starting up from here. It's zero, or actually this is one, two, three, four, five, you know. And then so on, this is number 65 chip. So you got the voltage is running like this, right? From side to side like that, all the way to 65th chip. You got heat seats on the back and the front, cooling off the chip, make sure it's nice and cool. Then you got all your voltage regulators here, all of your, all of your little switches, chips, all that stuff, capacitors, resistors, you got your five signals coming in. The, uh, you can see them maybe between the chips. Those are five signals uh, given it's uh, basically testing the wavelength on them um, <clears throat> and so on. So uh, as I remember, I think it's RO, RI, CI. I think there's a couple more there. But yeah, you can see them right here. BI, RO, CI, CLK, NRSTI. Those are the signals. So when I repair the boards, I gotta make sure all those signals are in spec and that they're transferring from chip one all the way to 65. Now that's just, this is the same thing for S19 Pro. It also has the same mechanism for testing the chips. Um, <clears throat> so for the S19 Pro, you have a different type of board. You have like big heat, heat sinks on it, not like this. This is uh, soldered on. Uh, each heat sink is, has solder on it and it's put on the chip. But the S19 Pro, it's just two big pieces that have um, thermal compound on it. So that thermal compound sits on the chip. So you can take off those two pieces and then you have access to all, all of the chips on there. And uh, that's way easier to, to, uh, to actually repair it. You don't have to have, you don't have to have a blow gun on it actually. You can just take off the screws and then you have it all off. And then you can look at the chips and actually measure the voltages without having to take off solder. This guy, you gotta take off solder. So I gotta heat up this heat sink so I can take it off the chip, take it off, you know, take a look at the chip or whatever to see what's wrong with it. All right, well, that's what we do with these guys. S17 Plus, S19 Pro. Um, I think all S19s have the same uh, setup with the heat sinks. I'm, I'm very positive that's most likely true. Um, the reason why I don't know for sure is because we never ran any S19Js or S19, you know, As. We only have Pros. So because of that, I can't say what the other hash boards or how the other hash boards are built. But coming off of Bitmain's track record, of uh, when they release a new series, they're basically all based on the same setup. Um, they just have different voltages maybe, or, or actually different, uh, what's it, uh, different, yeah, different uh, frequency. So they might raise the voltage, roll the voltage and have a different frequency on the hash board. And then they might have a different amount of chips on the hash board and that kind of did, did kind of separates uh, the uh, miners or the skew of miners. So you have S19A, S19J, S19 Pro. I think this one can be running at a slower frequency. This one's running at a faster frequency. And uh, this one's eating a little bit more. This one's eating a little bit less. 
and so on. So that's how they kind of separate the skews, but they're all should be based on the same exact setup, uh, just different, might be a different board uh, because they put more chips on or put less chips on. All right, well, I hope you guys liked the video. Hope you guys know what to do. Hit like, subscribe at the bell. Check out our other crypto mining social media accounts like BitChute, Rumble, Gab, Parler, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. And if you're looking for someone to set up a GPU mining farm or an ASIC mining farm such as this one, go to Crypto LLC, send us an email, and we'll get in touch. And that's going to be it for this one. Until next time, bye.